Hello there. My name is Mark, and today I'll be talking about material science and how it relates to my chosen problem, vitamin D deficiency. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about gelatin, which is covered under material science and is used in vitamin D supplements as a delivery system, specifically in soft gel release capsules. So what purpose does gelatin serve? It can be used for many things. However, it's commonly dissolved in water before use. It's often used in food as a gelling and thickening agent and is the primary, one of the primary ingredients in the, the popular food jello. It's what gives it the gel-like substance or gel-like consistency. Uh, it can be used in cosmetics as a moisturizer and it has medical applications, specifically as soft gel capsules. Uh, and this, this soft gel capsule is the coating around many pills we have today. It's very effective for oral drugs. And then unrefined gelatin can be used in some certain glues. So what are some of the properties of gelatin? Solubility, it's soluble in hot water. Conductivity, Gelatin is not very conductive, but the conductivity can be affected by the type of water that gelatin is dissolved in. Strength, gelatin is not a very strong material, and neither is it very reactive. At room temperature, it's a solid. However, it's almost always dissolved in water to form a gel-like substance, and it's tasteless and colorless. So how do the properties of gelatin make it useful? So for soft gel capsules, it's tasteless. The, the tasteless, colorless, and solid at room temperature properties play a role because it allows drug manufacturers to have a, a material that's cheap and won't affect the properties of their chosen pill or like the thing that you're, they're putting inside the pill. Uh, it's not going to ward off any potential customers through any sort of wacky taste. In food, the tasteless and colorlessness of gelatin also make it useful, and it adds a unique texture to food. So what is the structure of gelatin? So gelatin, a gelatin molecule looks like this at the right, this image over here. And all these CH2 groups are methylene groups, and these NH2 groups are amino groups. And then there are a few of these uh, pentagonal shapes, which are almost cyclopentane. However, this is very important, they are not cyclopentane because of these nitrogens. These are not cyclopentane rings. These are called pyrilidine rings. Not cyclopentane, these are pyrilidine rings right here. And that's because they have this nitrogen in them. Uh, these elements are covalently bonded, and the elements contained in the molecule are hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen. You can see the molecular formula at bottom left. It's C102, H151, O39, and N31. And it is a polar molecule. Uh, these are some of my sources. However, that's about all I have to say for today. Thank you all for listening.